Hi, I'm in Edinburgh with my film crew and we're here to find out what young people's opinion on Brexit is. Follow along. The situation on Brexit is right now that we know that the majority of the citizens in Scotland don't want to leave the European Union. However, we also know that the majority of the citizens in UK want to leave. Therefore, we have chosen to focus on the young people's opinion because they don't feel heard. After all, it is their future. One which is increasingly pro-EU all the time. Young people are pro-EU, they will remain so. People who enter the electorate are going to be pro-EU. I don't see any good, any good sides to Brexit. There are so many bad sides. There's the economy impact, as was said. I think it's also given rise to values that I don't share in the UK. So you get hate crime and all that, which surged off of the Brexit votes. I don't think it's good for Britain. 10% of young people voted to remain. Yeah, well, and the majority of old people voted to leave. Yeah. And I think that was really unfair because um, our, any, any policy, this is about the future. And so I think it should just be reconsidered. And not necessarily on the referendum, but the. The people of Britain should think about it now that it's two years down the line and think, is this really what we want? I think Edinburgh has the benefits of EU membership in particular because you, you get Edinburgh University here, for example, you really have an international atmosphere. You see a lot of friendly, friendly young people from all across the, con all across the continent, uh, across the world. I think that the government making a mistake and that it's not it's not going as, as everyone promised it would go. And people said that it would be easy and that the, and it would cost that much, but clearly it is going to cost a lot. And yeah, and I think they think it's unfair because they're being led into something that they didn't they didn't choose. I think it's very safe to say that the, young, the vast majority of young people in Edinburgh want to remain in the EU. Yeah, Edinburgh probably also gets a lot of EU funding. Although Edinburgh University gets hundreds of millions of, from, from the EU, so you also have the economic impact here. Um, I think it could um, raise up tensions about independence because obviously Scotland voted to remain, and I think that is very damaging because I think the UK is better as a whole. Scotland has this debate on the independence, so I think that would come to the fore again. So, of course, the Scottish National Party can appeal to the fact that the majority of Scottish people voted to stay in the EU, whereas the UK would now seem to be leaving. Well, I, I like to think this generation is more politicised than previous generations, so I, I really hope that young people can all get together and try and work towards what they want. At the moment, we're not being listened to. So, uh, How come you Well, of course, I, we strongly voice our, our opinion, which is to stay in the EU. And now we're just being sidelined altogether. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't see where the country is going if the young people are not listened to, because very soon we are going to be the electorate, and there's, the, there's, the, there's going to be no, nobody else but the, today's young people, the children of today. I think everyone's opinion matters, everyone's opinion matters equally, but I think young people's voices aren't as heard too much. And yeah, like people, uh, we are now being pushed out of not only the EU, but also the single market. So that's like adding insult to injury. So we've come on the road to ask a very serious question. Is it worth it? It's a real pleasure to welcome this fantastic initiative uh, to Edinburgh, which of course is a Remain city and the capital of our Remain nation. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that 75% of people in Edinburgh voted to remain in the European Union. And clearly, as an Edinburgh MP, it's my job to do everything I can to keep Scotland in the European Union. But I also think it's in the interest of the whole of the United Kingdom to remain in the European Union. And I think the referendum, which was won overall, by a small majority was won on the back of, of lies and misinformation. What are your opinion about the Brexit? 
Well, uh, I'm a Scottish member of the British Parliament. I represent Edinburgh South West and Scotland voted to remain in the European Union by 62% and Edinburgh voted by 75% to remain in the European Union. So uh, I, as a Scottish National Party MP and a Scottish MP, I'm very much wanting Scotland and the whole of the United Kingdom to remain a member of the European Union. And what do you think most of the young people here in Edinburgh think about it? Oh, they want to stay. Okay. I mean, research shows that across the United Kingdom as a whole, mm -hmm. the majority of young people voted to remain part of the European okay. Union. Yeah. Because, of course, they benefit. Young people benefit from freedom of movement, to go and study and work in 27 other member states. You know, why wouldn't you want to be able to do that? What consequences do you personally think it will have in Scotland? Well, the Scottish Government has produced research which shows that if we crash out of the European Union without a deal, it will cause a reduction of up to 8.5% in Scotland's gross domestic product, and that's equivalent to a loss of over £2,000 per head in Scotland. So, of course, that is really bad for the Scottish economy and uh, for jobs. So, uh, this research was produced in January. The British government rubbished the Scottish government's research, and then a month later, the British government's research was leaked, and it shows that the consequences would be even worse for Scotland and even worse for the whole of the United Kingdom. Okay. So I think the, the disadvantages of leaving the European Union far outweigh any potential advantages. In fact, it's hard to see any real advantages. Do you think that this generation generation has a big influence on Brexit? The young generation? Yes. Well, unfortunately, in Scotland they had a big influence because they were part of the overwhelming vote to remain. But in England, although young people voted to remain because older people voted to leave, young people were outweighed. One of the problems we have, particularly in Scotland, is we have an ageing population. And that's why Scotland needs young people to come from other parts of the European Union to come and study here and then to stay on and work here because we need their input. I mean, I was a young person in Edinburgh once myself, and I think it's really important to listen to young people's views because young people are the future of our country. Yeah. And in Scotland, we've introduced voting. You can vote from the age of 16 in Scotland because we think 16-year-olds should be allowed to vote. Because if you're 16, you can get married, you can join the army, you can get a job and be paying tax. So when Alex Salmond was First Minister of Scotland, he introduced votes for 16-year-olds. So in Scottish elections and Scottish referendums, 16 and 17-year-olds can vote. But the UK government are against that. But we really believe that young people contribute to society, so they should have their voice. We've been so lucky that we have gotten in contact with an expert from the Yes campaign on Brexit. So right, right now we've got an interview with him. Uh, my name is Tom McTuck. I live in Leith, part of Edinburgh, the Docks area. I'm an active member of the Scottish National Party and was active in the Remain campaign in the Brexit referendum. At the time of the referendum there were different Remain campaigns. We, the referendum was held five weeks after the national elections here in Scotland. So we came out of a long, hard election campaign, had one weekend off and then had to start campaigning again for for the referendum on Brexit. Absolutely disrespectful thing the London government did of holding it so close to our national election. There was um, everybody involved in politics in Scotland was busy dealing with our election. So suddenly you had to go into a new campaign, um, the media weren't ready for it, uh, there wasn't time to set up public meetings, it was, it was a shambles. We thought at the time it would have a negative effect on the Remain vote, um, we were wrong. Um, in our area we had a 78% vote to Remain. Um, Edinburgh voted massively to remain in the European Union, Scotland voted 62% to remain in the European Union, my area least voted 78% and my area has one of the highest concentrations of EU citizens anywhere in Scotland. So I think what we can say is that the areas where people from the EU live, the vote to remain was higher, even though EU citizens didn't get to vote. And Michael Russell, the Scottish government's Brexit minister, is making a statement about the lack of progress on negotiations. Well, opinions in Scotland on Europe vary very much depending on where you live. Um, in, in Edinburgh, we were 70% in some areas. Um, if you go up to the northeast of the country, um, I think the vote was 51% there. 
um, against uh, compared to the na national average of 62%. So, so yes, there's a big difference depending on where you live. Uh, the more urban, the more support for Europe. The more rural, the less, the less support for Europe. Now, all the opinion polls suggest that young people are massively angry, and that young people voted 70, 80% remain in Scotland. Young people do not have any influence on the London government. Um, now, if you're a young person in Wales or Northern Ireland or Scotland, you, ha you have a voting system similar to the one in Denmark. So you can, 5% of the population can make a big difference to, to things in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. In England, it's first past the post election system. The majority decides everything. Um, Conservative government down there are not listening to young people, don't care. They have a majority, that's the way it works. Young people, well, they don't feel heard for the simple reason that they're not heard. They, um, they, they, they don't control the media. I agree very much that the government doesn't listen to young people, and I think it's one of the major problems with our country. So, um, so far, we're not out of the EU. So, so yes, there has been a, an effect on the pound is weaker now. Um, that's the only effect so far, and that's not necessarily negative because if you export, you can export more when the pound's weak. So, so so far we've seen nothing yet. I think the economy is going to take a nosedive as soon as we leave Europe. Um, the economy could recover in 15, 20, 25 years, but I think there's going to be a long period of heavy, heavy decline and recession. Um, and again, that's going to hit young people more than it's going to hit the government. So You have to take a step back and look at um, what the Brexit referendum campaign was about. Okay, So you had one side fighting it, or the Remain side fighting the campaign, which was about the economy and about what was best for young people and for the future. And, and you had another campaign, the, the Leave side, um, down to slogans like, um, we will have £350 million extra for the health service per week if we leave Europe. Now, um, lots of people on our side of the argument said to them, show us the evidence. Um, people like the BBC, ITN, the people who should really be asking the questions, just gave them an easy ride and they got away with it. Um, and I, I've never seen quite such a racist campaign in Great Britain. Okay. Now, I don't like Great Britain, I want Scotland to be separate. I think we're completely different from, from down south and I think we deserve to have our own politics and our own government. But I've never, never before then did I think on the English voters as racist. There's the places where there are nobody to be afraid of that people were afraid. It's uh, sad. S somebody in London in this David Cameron's Conservative government just thought they would win the Remain vote easily. There would be no problem. Now, we knew we would win it easily in Scotland. We don't know why the Conservatives in London thought they would win it easily in England. Um, all the evidence suggested that they wouldn't win it easily. They would win, but not easily. And then they made a half-hearted campaign. There was, it was, there was no great effort put in by the political parties. It was, it was a disaster just waiting to happen. And as it got closer to the day, you could see it getting... We still didn't think it was going to happen, but... You can see it getting closer and closer. It's the snow has fallen here in Edinburgh, and after we talked with Tim, we got a feeling that the problem isn't really concerning the European Union. It sure has a big part of the discussion. However, it is more the UK that the Scottish people don't want to be a part of. So, although the majority of the people here in Scotland voted yes to remain in the European Union, they're part of the UK, which in total voted yes to leave. Also mentions the appearance of fake news in a lot of the campaigns with the purpose of voting yes for leaving the European Union. This was regarding the misinformation on how, uh, of how much the UK paid the U uh, European Union to be a part of the organization, which was a lot more than the actual number. The result uh, for this was therefore that people voted no because they thought that a large amount, amount of money could be used for something much better, for example, the UK citizens. The expressed opinion of the majority of the young people in Scotland is characterized by their consideration and security for their own future, which is which for them is a very clever and understandable choice. They want political and legal benefits, economic benefits, 
labor and free movement of people, environmental benefits and consumer benefits. They are right now fighting for their future, which is to remain in the European Union. Some of them are a part of a political organization called YIM, Young European Movement. After all of the research that we have done, we are sitting here with a feeling of injustice. The idea that the UK citizens has voted based on misinformation regarding the EU budget, which was the basis of a lot of campaigns with the purpose of leaving the EU, bother us. For the politicians today that is ruining the younger generation's possibilities for their future, is it really worth it?